Hello, this is section 2-2 about circles. Um, in this section, we're going to talk about the equations of circles, how to find those equations, how to get them in the correct form, how to graph, all of that stuff. Um, so first, let's look at the definition. Uh, the definition of a circle is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point called the center. Now this fixed point, um, if you take, or fixed distance, if you take any point on the actual circle and you uh, measure the distance from that, that point back to the center, it will always be equal. And that distance or length we're going to call the radius. So those are two terms that um, are really important. <clears throat> the standard form of an equation of a circle let me make it a little bigger here, is x minus h squared plus the quantity of y minus k squared equals r squared. Now, if you take out these values, now notice that in the equation they are minus there. When you take them out to find the center, you use the opposite. So you don't want to necessarily think it went from negative to positive. It went from one thing in the equation to its opposite as written as the center. The radius is always a distance. So normally when we think, you know, in this equation we see r squared, the r is going to be positive because it's a length. So you can dis disregard that plus or minus in front if we have to deal with that. So that's the important circle equation. Again, that's called standard form. And you're gonna pull out the center is hk. And you'll notice right here is our radius. Um, you just have to square root that value to find what that is. So it says graph a circle. Let's do the first uh, example. Graph a circle with center negative three, two and radius of four. Um, you'll notice that they have done this. They Put an open circle at the center so that might be something that Alex does <clears throat> excuse me if you're graphing this for me on a sheet of paper put a little C by that center point okay now you'll notice from here we counted out four in all directions one two three four one two three four that's a really good um, method to get your circle down and then we're going to graph it now, I will tell you, I don't draw very good circles, but especially on an iPad. If we think about the equation of this circle, let's remember our template, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So right here, we have to put a negative three. Right here, we have to put a two. And right here, we have to put a four. So that's going to be x minus negative 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 4 squared. Now, if it's a negative, you definitely want to use my the parentheses here to remind you that's going to be x plus 3 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 16. Do you see how this uh, point was negative 3, but when we stick it in the equation, it becomes a plus 3. This point was positive 2, but when we stick it in the equation, it becomes a minus 2. And that's not a coincidence. That should happen every time. Okay, so that is that um, on graphing and finding the equation of the circle. Not bad in, when you go in this direction. So let's do a few more. So um, let's put this in standard form. Here's our h, here's our k, here's our r. Remember, I'm going to write the equation over here to the right. It's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. <coughs> so that's going to be um, x minus 0 squared plus y minus a negative 3 will become a plus 3. squared equals 2 squared. Now let's do a little simplification here. That's going to be x squared plus y plus 3 squared equals 4. So now let's draw it. So we're going to go 
to the point 0, negative 3. Our radius is 2, so count up 2, down 2, left 2, right 2, and make our circle. <laughs> okay, let's look at number two. So our H is four, our K is three, our R is three. So it's going to be X minus four squared plus Y minus three squared equals three squared or X minus four squared plus Y minus three squared equals nine. Let's draw our circle. We're going to go to the point 4, 3, which is 4 to the right and up 3. That's our circle, our center. From that point, we're going to count down 3, up 3, left 3, right 3, and we're going to get our circle. Okay, so that is drawing then if we know the center and the radius and finding the equation. Now, <clears throat> here, they have given us some information. Um, they have used the word tangent to two. So that means that it is going to just touch it once, skim across, and then keep going. It won't turn, uh, hit it anywhere else. Now, first let's put our center on. So we're going to go to the point 1, 2, 3, and then to 3 to the right and down 2. Now that's our center. For me to only hit the y-axis at one place, my radius has to be exactly 3 units over to the left because it will only then hit it once, but not hit it anywhere else. <clears throat> so we just found our radius to be three. Now let's count up three, down three, to the right three, and then let's finish off our circle. <laughs> I make such an excellent circle. Okay. So what did we find? Well, we found our HK was 3, negative 2. Well, they told us that. And we found our radius to be 3. Now let's put it in the equation. It's going to be x minus 3 squared plus y plus 2 squared equals r squared. And we can just do that if we want. Okay? So there is example 3. Now that x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared is considered standard form. But there is also a form called general form. <coughs> Excuse me. But what is general form? General form, we just need to multiply it all out. Let's look at uh, how we write it. We put the x squared, then the y squared, then we put the plane x, then we put the plane y, then we put the number, and then we want it equal to zero. So it's just a matter of multiplying it all out. That's all it is. Okay. So let's multiply this one out. Now remember, <clears throat> that means x plus 8 times x plus 8. Okay, so when we multiply that out, we're going to get x squared plus 16x plus 64. Now we've got this y minus 1 squared. Now remember, that means y minus 1. So we have to distribute that out. So that's going to be y squared minus 2y plus 1. And then, of course, it told me that was equal to 25. Okay. Now, 
Um, let's uh, subtract 25 from both sides. I'm just going to kind of write it over there. And then let's put everything in the order that they discuss. So x squared comes first, then y squared. Now our x term comes. Now our y term comes. And then the last term you'll notice is just our number. So that's going to be 64 minus 25 plus 1. And in this case, that's going to be 40, positive 40. And then that will equal 0. Okay? So that is the general form of that circle. Now, if we wanted to graph it, you'll notice that the first form, that standard form, is better because we know the center is negative 8, positive 1, and that the radius is the square root of 25. So general form is used for other things. So um, they've kind of listed what I just said here. To write an equation from general form into standard form, we must complete the square. Oh, I'm sorry, they're just talking about now going the opposite way. Okay, so um, what they say to do is uh, group the x terms and group the y terms, move the constant term to the y right, complete the squares, identify the center and radius from the equation. So I'm going to kind of do that, but I'm going to kind of talk you through this process is one of the harder ones when we're talking about um, circles, okay? So the first thing they say to do is to group the x terms and the y terms together. Now I'm going to do it in a very, very specific way. I'm going to take the x's and write them in descending order plus a blank. I'm going to take the y's, write them in descending order, plus a blank. Okay, now I have those there for a reason. <laughs> Just, you know, kind of kind of stick with me here. And then I'm going to move the 68 to the other side. It's going to switch signs, so it's going to become negative 68. And I need a blank for each of the blanks I put on the left, okay? The purple blank is going to help us complete the square for the purple x's. The green blank is going to help us complete the square for the, the green y's, okay? So I kind of think of it as a placeholder. We had done completing the square when we were dealing with quadratics. It is the same procedure, except now you do it for x's, and then you separate it and you do it for y's. Let's do it for the x's. So remember, half this number always goes here. Your variable square rooted always goes there. So half of negative 4 is negative 2. And then negative 2 squared always fills that spot. So half the middle number will fill our blank. So half of negative 4 is negative 2. Put it in parentheses because that back piece that we add on is always going to be a plus. So negative 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to actually physically write a 4 down on the right side. Okay. So now let's do the y's. So uh, my variable goes here just to the first power. Half of my number goes here. There's always a plus between them. Okay. Negative 10 squared fills this spot. Why not actually do it to the right? Negative 10 times negative 10 is positive 100. And then we're physically going to add and subtract all those numbers. So negative 68 plus 4 plus 100 is 36. We now have it in standard form. So we went from general to standard by completing the square twice. Once for the x's and once for the y's. The opposite of this number is going to be our h. 
the opposite of this number is going to be our k. The square root of this number is going to be our radius. Remember, I don't need the plus or minus because it's always a positive. So our center is the point 210. Our radius is 6. If you were to graph it, you just go to the point 210, go up 6, down 6, left 6, right 6, form your circle. So that is going from standard form and taking it into... I'm sorry, from general form, taking it into our standard form because our standard form is so nice to identify the center and the radius, which we need to graph it anyway. So we're just going to practice this procedure. So we're going to take our x's, write them together. We're going to take our y's, we're going to write them together putting a blank each time. Our 21 is going to move to the other side. When it moves to the other side, change its sign. We have a blank for each blank we currently have on the left. We need that same blank on the right. Now let's go ahead and complete the square for our x's. So it's going to be x plus 5 is our perfect square. 5 squared is going to fill that spot, so why not put what that is, 25, on the other side. Let's do the same procedure for our y's. That's going to be y plus 2 squared, because half of 4 goes in the bottom. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared fills that spot. I'm sorry, I'm kind of thinking head of my brain here. 2 squared is 4. And then we're just going to do negative 21 plus 25 plus 4, which is 8. So that means our uh, h is going to be 5. Oh, I'm sorry, no it's not. Remember, that has to switch signs. So that's going to be negative 5. Our k is going to be negative 2. Our r is going to be the square root of 8. Writing it as a square root of 8 is fine. You know, they may want you to write it as 2 square root of 2. If we were to graph it, we need its approximate decimal value. The square root of 8 is about 2.8. Okay, so I know that our center is negative 5, negative 2, and our radius is 2 square root of 2. So that is that one. And then if they wanted you to type it in, this would be your standard form. Okay, let's do another one. So we're going to put the x's together with a blank. We're going to put the y's together plus a blank. We're going to move the number to the other side of the equation, changing its sign. Now, in this particular problem, we're going to get some fractions happen, and that's okay. Um, just follow along, you'll see what happens. So half of 3 fills the spot. If you are not divisible by 2, because you're taking half of that number, just put it over 2. It will be the most efficient thing to do. 1.5 is not the way to go for that. I would definitely put it 3 over 2. Okay. Now, uh, 3 over 2 squared is going to fill that spot. Now, how do you square a fraction? Well, negative 3 over 2 times negative 3 over 2. Two negatives make a positive. We know that. To square a fraction, just square the top, 3 times 3. Square the bottom, 2 times 2. Now, that is going to fill my orange block, which I forgot to write in there for you, but let me do that. Okay, and then let's continue. Let's complete the square for our y's. So it's going to be y minus 6 squared, which is 36. That's going to go here. Now, 149, negative 149 fourths plus positive 9 fourths, because they're both fourths, let's add them together. You actually get negative 140 over 
um, 4 plus 36. Now I'm going to keep going here. That is 140 is divisible by 4. It is um, 35. So that would be negative 35 plus 36. which is one. So for this particular equation, our center is the point three halves positive six, and our radius is the square root of one or one. So there's one that has a little twist. It has some um, It has some um, fractions in it. It's usually better to keep them in fractions for this particular um, type of problem than some other types. So let's look at what they're telling us here. It says the equation represents that we know of as standard form represents a circle of, a, um, of radius r only if r squared is positive. If r squared is zero, then it represents a point. If r squared is negative, then the solution set is empty. So here it says, determine if the equation represents a circle. So let's complete the square and we should make sure that we get equals a positive number. If we get equals a negative or zero, we would say, no, it is not a circle. Okay, so let's put the x's together plus a blank. Let's put the y's together plus a blank. Let's move the 74 to the other side, making it negative. And we've got our two blanks. Okay, so we're going to do half of this, which is x plus 5 squared, which is 25, added to both sides. Sorry, I did that a little fast than I should have, but okay, so I took half of 10 is 5. 5 squared fills that spot. Half of 7 is 49. No, it isn't. I'm sorry. Let's say that again. <laughs> half of 14 is 7. That's what went here. And then uh, 7 squared fills the spot, which is 49. There we go. That makes a little more sense. And if we add those up, negative 74 plus 25 plus 49, we could say that it's equal to 0. So it's not a circle. It is technically a point. Think about, we're at the center, negative 5, 7. We go 0, left, right, or up or down, so we're stuck at that point. Okay, so that's that one. And um, this is just about graphing circles on a like a TI-84, I think that would be, a, a, an Inspire, one of those. We're not going to be using graphing calculators uh, that type. Um, we're going to probably, if we have to use any graphing calculators, we'll use like Desmos or something like that. Uh, for Desmos, um, you can just enter the equation as is, and you don't have to explicitly solve it for one variable like y that some uh, graphing calculators do. So that is your circle lesson. Um, I hope you learned a little bit. Um, thanks for watching. You have a good day. Bye.